ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch 15 minutes. Share with everyone. Finally, news that speaks to us. Good evening. This is Making the Case. I'm Yuri Tualde. Guilty on all counts. It took a jury in D.C. just two hours to reach a verdict today in the first criminal trial tied to the January 6th insurrection. Prosecutors say Guy Reffitt lit the fire in a mob that eventually overwhelmed Capitol Police. And today, the jury convicted him on five felony charges. They found him guilty of storming the Capitol with a handgun, obstructing a joint session of Congress, interfering with police, and threatening his two teenage children if they reported him to law enforcement. Hundreds of defendants face felony charges related to the Capitol riots, and this case could significantly influence just how many of those defendants will take their chances in trial. Joining me to talk more about today's verdict and its impact, former prosecutor Vonda M. Sargent and defense attorney Rick Petrie. Glad to have you both on tonight. First off, with all of the evidence the prosecution uh, presented, did this verdict surprise either of you? Vonda, you first. No, not at all. I wasn't remotely surprised. I mean, in order for the defense to even mount any sort of defense in this case would be tell the jurors not to believe their lying eyes. So absolutely not. The most difficult uh, charge that they had was the one where he was uh, threatening his children with harm if they told on him. That was the most difficult charge that they had to prove. And having his son take the stand and having the recordings of him actually threatening his children, that was a no-brainer as well. Rick, your reaction to today's verdict? Yeah, I, I join our other guests. I'm not surprised by the verdict. I think there's overwhelming evidence uh, to support all of the charges, including, I mean, threatening your children not to tell on you. It's, it's pretty, pretty compelling. Well, Ruffett's uh, sentencing date is scheduled for June 8th, and he could get up to 20 years in prison on the most serious charge alone, mm. but it's expected that he'll get far less time, right? The longest sentence among those who uh, pleaded was five years and three months for Robert Palmer, a Florida man who pleaded guilty to attacking police officers at the Capitol. Vonda, there comes some incentive for a defendant who takes a plea uh, to avoid wasting the county's time, uh, the money. Here, given the damning evidence against Reffitt, he still chose to go to trial, which, you know, he has a right to do. But could that come with a cost in his sentencing? Uh, it certainly would, um, in my experience, when I was a prosecutor, most assuredly the sentence would be much stiffer. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in our judicial system when it comes to people uh, without a lot of melanin in their skin um, being a judge the way that they should be a judge. I think the five-year sentence that was given to the man who pled guilty was a joke and a slap on the wrist. So I really don't have much faith that he's going to face the harsh penalties that he should face. Uh, and the charges, in my opinion, were not the ones that they should have been. They should have been sedition. So I, 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 we'll, we'll have to wait and see. You know, he got found guilty, but the truth is in the sentencing. So when when he sentences, when I will sit back and go, okay, justice has been served. But at this point, it merely is a, a, a conviction that should have happened. Rick, the riot resulted in the deaths of five people, including a police officer. More than 100 officers were injured, and rioters caused over $1 million in damage to the Capitol. What are you expecting he'll get? You know, I think it, it should be a very stiff penalty. I mean, he claimed in his defense that he didn't get all the way into the Capitol and he didn't do this and he didn't do that. Well, that defense just didn't hold up. And so I think it should be a very stiff penalty. I mean, after all, what was underway was nothing less than an attempt to overturn the election. That's that's what it was. You know, I, I read a comment by someone who said, well, geez, if you're going to get convicted of exercising your First Amendment rights, then we're all in trouble. But this is not simply exercising your First Amendment rights. This is something much different mm -hmm. than that, far more serious than that. And I think also that a stiff sentence combined with the recent indictment on the conspiracy charges, and frankly, I'm surprised, considering that you mentioned that there were people that were actually killed as a result of this, I'm surprised that there haven't been even more severe charges brought but with regard to this particular defendant, 
I'm hopeful that this, the sentence will be very severe. Well, someone else that talked about the, uh, her husband's First Amendment right was Reffitt's wife, and she spoke to reporters after the sentence. When asked about the impact of the verdict on the dozens of other cases tied to the insurrection, she said, quote, don't take a plea. They want us to take a plea. The reason we have all guilty verdicts is that they're making a point out of Guy, and that is to intimidate, an other, to intimidate the other members of the 1-6ers and we will all fight together. Um, back to you, Rick, um, since you mentioned the First Amendment and how confused she's clearly, uh, on, she's clearly confused about what the First Amendment actually you know, says, but she also doesn't show any remorse for what her husband did, especially to his own children who testified against him in trial. But will the government um, pay attention to her words? Will the judge listen to those words? Will they be listening? And can her comments hurt Reffitt at his sentencing? I, I think they can. And, and I think that the, the thing that's really serious here, and I hope that people really wake up to this threat, and that is this man is part of a much larger movement, frankly, that the FBI has declared. And this is not something new since January 6th. It's been the biggest domestic threat in the United States for quite some time, and that's white supremacy. And when folks are making these kind of statements, don't plead guilty, even if you are guilty, go to trial, they're just trying to make an example out of him. I would hope that a judge would be very concerned about that. And when it comes time for sentencing, not be concerned about sending a very strong message that in these United States, we are not going to tolerate this type of behavior. And if you choose to engage in it, and if you get caught and you get prosecuted and convicted, you will face the stiffest penalties under law. Vonda, the government presumably started with the strongest case that they had, right? Their evidence consisted of reliable and accurate videos and credible witnesses. Um, and the jury just took two hours with guilty verdicts across the board. Should other defendants be concerned with today's verdict and gamble with their own case by going to trial? You know, I think it all, we have to circle back around to the sentencing. It all depends on what the sentencing uh, that guy Reddit faces. If he walks away with a slap on the wrist, uh, 20 months in prison, uh, two years in prison, then I don't think they should be concerned. If he walks away with what he should be facing under the law, like Mr. Petrie said, a stiff sentence, a sentence that sends a message that this group of people who are threatening our very democracy um, are going to have to pay for it, then I think, yes, they should be concerned. I'm a little taken aback that we didn't have sentencing right then and there. Um, the judge knew what was going on. I do understand that there has to be a sentencing recommendation and all of those sorts of issues that, that the court has to go through. but. You know, if if what the the, the um, prosecution wants to do and what the government wants to do is send a message to what Mr. Petrie pointed out quite aptly, the greatest threat to our country at this point is white supremacy and the, and the members of these groups, then they have to send a strong and stern message. So at this point, no, I don't think that they would be concerned because at this point, no one, the largest amount of time anyone's faced is five years. And given what they've done, that's not a lot of time. Rick, your thoughts, please. Should defendants reconsider their trial strategy moving forward? Absolutely. You know, to have a jury come back in two hours, I think also sends a very strong message that this was a compelling case. Um, that's pretty quick for a, for a jury to return with a verdict, considering. Um, during that two hours, they had to pick a four-person and at least give some sort of consideration to the charges and the evidence and testimony that was presented. To me, that says, uh, you, if you come with the same defense that he came with, you can expect the same outcome in terms of being found guilty. And, and again, I, and I, I, I know I'm repeating myself somewhat, but this is a, I think it's very important that people understand the actual threat that this presents with these white supremacists. They're, they're saying without reservation, we're not done. If you think that you've seen something so far, you haven't seen anything yet. And I think if the government and the judicial system doesn't send a strong message back,
that they will indeed make good on these promises of continuing to do this type of stuff or maybe even something worse. So I think we're at a crossroads.